Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. So you've seen this quilt before, haven't you? It was in the 12 days of quiltmas challenge of making ugly quilts or making ugly beautiful quilts. So if you haven't watched that video, I've linked it somewhere up here and that will show you me making this lovely quilt in time lapse. But what you didn't know is that this is a pattern that I came up with like a long time ago, over five years now. And then I forgot what I did. And then I looked at my table runner and I said, oh, wait, yeah, this is what I did, whatever. Anyways, so I made this in a giant version, but in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make it in another big quilt, but smaller block version. This version right here was made with 16 inch blocks and then chopped down to create this look. It is called Southwestern Mountains. This one is just so happens to be Southwestern Christmas because it's ugly Christmas fabrics. But the Southwestern Mountains one, you will see very shortly how that one turns out. So I'm going to show you guys how to make that. But before I do, I want to show you my original design. So here you can see my table runner that I've had forever and a day. This was my original design for the Southwestern Mountains. Now, you're thinking, I've seen this somewhere before. Yes, you have. This is the, the Delectable Mountains, I can't ever say that correctly, Delectable Mountains pattern. Missouri Star has done a video, and I think Quilt in a Day with Eleanor Burns has also made this into a pattern, but not like mine. There's none other than the Southwestern Mountains, which you see here. So I decided to take this, and make you guys a big 80 by 83 quilt out of this. And all you need is some yardage, a layer cake, and a layer cake, and some yardage, which I will get to in just a minute as I show you how to make this quilt. Okay, let's make the Southwestern Mountains. The first thing you're going to need is one 42 piece layer cake. So here is my bright and cheery layer cake. It is boundless fabrics. You probably cannot find this anymore unless you search on Etsy, but they don't come with names on them, so it's really hard to tell you the name of the layer cake. The next thing you are going to need is a layer cake of a background color. Now, you could also just buy five yards of the background and cut your layer cake yourself because you will need that same background for your border. So what you can do is if you buy a layer cake, you only need one and a half yards of that same color. So if you use white, you'll need one and a half yards white or whatever color you use. Just know that you need extra. So five yards, you're going to cut your own layer cake worth and have background or have your layer cake and then an extra one and a half yards of your background. The next and final thing you're going to need. One and a half yard of an accent. So both my accent and my background are Shadow Play by Maywood Studios. So I got my aqua blue and I got a yellow. All of it goes together quite nicely. One layer cake of a focal print, one layer cake of your background plus some yardage, one and a half yards or five yards for both and one and a half yards for your accent color. Let's get to making this quilt. And I'm also probably going to add another border, but that will be chosen after I get the quilt together because right now it's hard to decide on what I want for my second border. So let's get started on how to make the Southwestern Mountains quilt. We're gonna go ahead and start with our accent color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that up and we're gonna cut 28 one inch strips. That's 28 one inch strips, but I'm going to go ahead and put you in time lapse while I cut one inch strips. I'm going to leave you on this side now, and we're going to go ahead and cut our layer cake. 
and our layer cake background. So I'm going to start by doing the layer cake first. I'm just going to get the ribbon off of it. And what we're going to do is just take a couple off the top like this. I'm going to leave them stacked nicely. I don't want them to get askewed. And we're going to go ahead and cut them from corner to corner. So from one corner to the other, we're just going to make a nice straight cut just like that. Okay. So from corner to corner, we're going to do that with the whole entire layer cake. So again, grab a stack, get a ruler, a rotary cutter and cut from corner to corner. I'm going to go ahead, stacking them up like this, grab another segment. You can cut as many layers as you're comfortable with cutting. I just put a fresh blade in this rotary cutter. So this one cuts through lots of layers like butter. This one, on the other hand, needs to be changed. I'm going to cut the whole entire layer cake up in half. All right, now that that layer cake is cut in half, let's cut the background in half. So mine kind of got a little funky, so I'm just going to be stacking them up nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and cut these also exactly in diagonal half. Diagonal half. I'm going to make a couple piles and stack them up. Make it easier. All right, just cutting them on the diagonal exactly in half creating triangles. All right, so now that I have all of these in half and all of my layer cake pieces all cut in half, I'm gonna go ahead and stack this on top of here and stack this on top of here. And we're gonna take these to the sewing machine. We're gonna take this and our accent pieces and we're gonna sew, you should get three ac uh, of these per accent strip. So we're gonna take these to the machine. I'm gonna sew one on one side and do all of them and then come back and sew the others on the opposite side. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. I'm going to grab my accent strips and bring them over and put them in the bed of the machine like this. And then I'm going to stick my stack of the colored ones right next to me, but on the table right here because they're just going to fall off. I'm going to start with one accent strip. So we're going to pull out one accent strip and then we're going to grab one of our triangles. Now remember, this is a bias seam. I'm going to go ahead and lay this hanging over just a little bit for the salvage to hang off. I'm going to stick it under the machine and I am going to go ahead and sew these with a 2.0 stitch length, one right after the other with a quarter inch seam. So here's one. When I'm coming close to the end, I'm going to grab a second one. I'm going to put it underneath about right here. It's going to come down just a little bit. It's going to go on to the next. I do not want them touching because I need the excess to separate them. So about a half an inch apart. We're going to go ahead and you can see I have about a half an inch there in between the two. And you get three of them per strip. And I probably did my math wrong. So sooner or later, we'll probably run out of the one inch strips. But for now, we have a bunch to start with. So again, you're going to get three per strip, three half triangles per strip. Sewing them in. With a quarter inch seam. I'm going to have repeats in here as well. All right, 
and one more will fit. Get it under there, start it, line it the rest of the way up, and so. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put you in time lapse while I sew all these to one side of my accent, and I'll come back and tell you what's next. Now that we have sewn all 28 of our accent strips to one of these, it's time to separate them. And remember I said to give them about a half an inch apart? That is because I'm gonna chop right in the middle so that I have some hanging over on the top and some hanging over on the bottom. So now it's time to just separate them. Again, you can use scissors or a rotary cutter to do this step. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to separate all of these. So the ones, there's only three per. So there's some that have the hangover really far and some that do not. We're just separating them in half and stacking them out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and just put you back in time lapse while I separate all of these because this is going to take a few minutes right here with the scissors because scissors take a while but I, like I said you can use um, a rotary cutter and a ruler if you want but scissors work just fine so I'm going to go ahead and do this and I will meet you at the next step So the next step is to bring all these to the ironing board and we are going to be pressing them towards the accent color. Now be very careful pressing them. This is a bias seam against a straight grain seam. So it still kind of wants to bend. But if you just use your fingers to manipulate it and fold it back or you can set your seam by putting some heat on the seam first, and then roll it back so it rolls back nicely, creating a nice straight edge, and then once that's back, run your iron down it. So we're just pressing these towards the accent. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into time lapse while I press all these, all these pieces back. Okay, now they are all pressed. That's a lot, right? <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is taking this side now and this side, and we're going to be putting them together. So we're gonna grab one of these and one of these, and it's gonna go right sides together, and we're gonna be sewing it onto the other side of the yellow or the accent color. What you can see here is these points Line those points up, so from here to here, that's a straight line, and then that's where you're gonna sew. So this is a lot of lining it up, so there's one. You would take the next one, and when you put it right sides together, you're gonna match these points. They're not touching each other, there is a gap, but you're gonna put those where they are opposite 
with a straight line to the end. So we're centering it on there. So we're gonna go ahead and sew every single one of these, straightening up this to land in the center. Now, if you don't know where your center is, you could always fold this in half, create a crease like that, and then you can fold this in half, matching the block itself, not the, because this hangs over, we're not matching that, we're actually matching the edge of the block. Create a crease there, just by shoving it down with your finger. And now you can see I have a crease, and then I also have a crease here, and you can line those two creases up, which will in turn be your center, okay? So you can do it that way with every single one of these, or you can just go to the machine, grab one of each, line them up, and sew them through. So they, they match right here at the end. And don't worry about what's going on at both of these ends. That's no big deal. All right, so we're going to go to the machine now and sew all of these like this to this. Let's go sew that. So I'm going to go ahead now and show you. Oops. I'm just going to make sure that it's lined up. Put it through here and with a quarter inch seam allowance. They are lined up and... Remember, this is now a bias to a straight of grain on the bottom this time. So your top could potentially stretch, but that is okay. So then you would go ahead and match up your next piece, making sure that there's center on there, and then slide it through. This is called chain piecing. We're trying to save as much thread as possible because I've already on my third bobbin. There is a lot of sewing involved. A lot of sewing involved. So I'm going to go ahead and throw you back in time lapse while I go ahead and sew all of this together because there is a lot to sew. So we're going to go back into time lapse now. Okay, now that all of the blocks are sewn together, making half square triangles like this, we're going to go ahead and press these now towards the background. So I'm just going to go ahead and press everything towards the background. Just like this. And we should have a nice square when it is done. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this back into time lapse while I press all of my blocks. Okay. The next step after we press everything is to trim all of this. This is a very large pile and it's going to take a while. So we're going to take one block and what we're going to do is take a large ruler. Down every center of every large ruler you have your 45 degree line. We're going to be using that to line up in the center. So you're going to be eyeballing this. You're going to use it in the center of your accent fabric. So line it up in the center, and we're going to be trimming all of these to nine inches. 
So you're going to have plenty of wiggle room for nine inches. So there's one side, spin it around, or if you have a rotating mat, use that. We're going to come here, line it up to nine inches. Yes, there is a little bit of waste with this, but it will work best if we trim everything like we're supposed to. And I went ahead and changed my blade while I was off camera, so I have a nice, sharp, crisp blade now, cutting like butter. So we're going to go ahead and trim every single block to nine inches, and I'm going to stack them out of the way while I do this. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up again. That center 45 degree line needs to be into the center of your two pieces of your block. So it is center in your accent fabric. Make sure you pay attention to that. So just cut your two sides. And again, if you have a rotating mat, use that. And then line it up to nine inches. And you'll notice when you line your nine inches up on your nice straight cut edge, that your 45 degree line is still going to be center. It will come out the center of the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're checking that as you trim. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut all of these. I will not leave the camera um, on this mode. We are going to 100% time lapse this next this step right here because this is going to take me at least an hour to cut all this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw you in time lapse and get working on chopping all this up. Okay, now that I've made a big waste pile, if you didn't notice while I was in time lapse, I was stacking these in sets of two. Now that you do not have to do. You do not have to keep them in sets of two with your matching colors. I, on the other hand, am keeping my matching colors together. So go ahead and put all your pieces in sets of two. There will always be two because technically these two pieces were originally one piece. So there's always going to be sets of two. Now we're going to lay these out on our cutting table. Now you're facing me from the other angle, but no matter which way you do it, it should still work. So I'm on my piece and you're facing me doing this. So I'm going to go ahead now and move these just a little bit over. We're going to go ahead and subcut these now to two and one quarter two and one quarter or two and a fourth. So we're gonna make three, two and one quarter inch cuts. So it's gonna be like this. So there's one, and two and one quarter. That is the notch right after two. That is usually a solid line on your ruler. Two and one fourth, and you're gonna make three cuts per block piece. So here we go with the third cut. So all three of these, even your last one, should measure two and one quarter. So I'm gonna move those right there, and we're gonna go ahead and cut these now to two and one quarter. So line it up on the edge. You're gonna go 
two and one quarter, slide it over two and one quarter. And if you need to mark your ruler, go ahead and do so. And then one more two and a quarter inch cut. That'll give you four two and a quarter inch strips. So there are those. And what I'm going to do while they're in this stage is I'm going to flip them. So I'm going to flip them like this. I'm picking up the piece and turning it. Picking up the piece and turning it just like that. Okay? Then, and this is facing you, my next one is going to be facing me. Then we're going to take another set of two of an opposite color. This is if you're keeping them together. You do not have to keep them together. We're going to take another set of two of a contrasting color, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process. I'm going to cut four or three cuts of two and a quarter. It gives me four two and a quarter inch strips. So there's one. two and three. That gives me four two and a quarter inch strips. We're going to do that again now on the next one. So lining it up to two and one quarter. One. Two. And my third cut, two and one quarter. That makes all of your pieces two and one quarter. Now these ones are going to get flipped as well. So I'm just flipping them like this. Oop. All right, they are flipped, okay? But these ones are gonna be different. They're going to be the opposite. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn these around like this. And then I'm going to turn these around. I have a mess up. This is the way I want it right here, just like this. There we go. That is the way I want it. I need it to face me or else I'm going to get confused. That's what's confusing me because it's not facing me. All right. These are in order now. So we're going to have that guy face here. This little guy is going to face there. Nope, nope, nope. <coughs> I'm going to put them back in order. That way I don't confuse myself. There we go. Just like that. That's the second one. That's the third one. And that's the fourth one. And then this one is the second one, third one, and fourth one. Okay, sorry I confused you there. I didn't mean to, but when I get turned around because I'm trying to show you guys the correct direction, this is what happens. All right, so once they are flipped, this is what happens. And I will repeat this step all over again just so that you can see. I'll try to make it less confusing next time. We're going to go ahead and sew this to that, 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 and then this to this to this to this to this to this to that and that. And then we're going to sew the group of them together after we press. So I'm going to go ahead now and go over to the machine and sew these. And I'm just going to put you in fast forward while I get them sewn real quick. Okay, once you have your two sets together, Everything on this row is finger pressed to the right and everything on this one is finger pressed to the left. So that way when I sew them together, everything will nest together. 
But before I sew that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and press them and make sure that everything here is going to the left and everything here is going to the right. That way they're nice and flat. Okay, so now that I have them all pressed nice and flat, again, this is the way they're gonna go, opposite of each other, right sides together, and these seams should nest up all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that. Once it is sewn, I'm gonna go ahead and press it one way or the other, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna press it opposite. And here is the block right here. So this block is 14 and a half by 17 and a half. And we're gonna make a few of these, quite a few of these, 20 of them. So here we are, we're gonna grab some colors. I'm gonna grab two opposite colors. This is why I put everything in sets of two. So I'm gonna do these guys first, and then I'm gonna do the next. And before I turn them, I will just lay them where I want them and then turn them. So two and a quarter, two and a quarter. You'll get three two and a quarter cuts, giving you four two and a quarter strips. I'm just gonna set them up there. Two and a quarter. Okay, so those are there like this. I'm gonna go ahead and flip them around. Just like that. That's gonna be my bottom one. Again, two and a quarter, so we're gonna cut again. And the second one is the one that always confuses. Once you have that top one, the next one becomes a little bit confusing because we want them to be the full color towards the inside. All right, so we want that red to stay on the top. So I'm gonna move this down here. Slide this over here. I'm gonna have these four on this side. And these four on this side. this. So kind of confusing a little bit. But this is what it looks like. So we want all the solids to land the solid colors your your pattern fabric to land on one and then your other one will be your background fabric. So they're opposite of each other just like this. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and sew this to that, that to that, 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 and then sew this, 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 and that. And we're gonna press all this one to the right or left, it doesn't matter which way, as long as they're all going the same direction. And then this one will be the opposite. So if I press this one all to the right, this one needs to all go to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that now. I do want to pause here and say that I am flopping the seam on one side to where the seams nest when they come together at these two center ones. So when I get to these two center ones, I'm just gonna flip one of the seams the opposite direction. All right, now that I have shown you how to make the block, so this is the blocks right here. OK, 
Okay, this is what the blocks look like. We're going to make 20 of them, or in our case, 21 of them. You will have one extra left over. We're going to take and piece all 20 blocks. So remember, it's four units. One unit, two, three, four of two opposite colors. And they're always going to go together just like this with the your background on one side and your print on the other. Your background is always going to be on one side and your print is always going to be on the other. So let's go ahead and turn all this. I put them groupings together of four. So two of two different colors each. So that's four pieces. I just put them together in groupings of four and I'm going to go ahead and put you in time lapse while I sew all of this together. So let's get to sewing some blocks. I'm just going to cut so cut so cut so i probably could chain piece the whole lot of them let's just cut and sew and to make it even easier to make it even easier, everything that is your background, press to the right, and everything that is your print, press to the left. That way, every time you join the two and you put them right sides together, they will be nesting seams. So again, press all the background ones that come to the center to the right and all of the your focal or print fabric to the left.
now that all the blocks are made, it's time to lay them out. So here we are in the fabric room, the biggest floor in my house. I'm gonna lay them out now. Now to sew the rows together. So here's one row. I'm just going to hook this one to this one, then this one to the next one, and so on and so forth until they're all sewn together. Okay, now that the quilt top center part is done, let's work on the borders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss this out of the way, and we are going to grab the rest of our yardage. So here we have the yellow, and then we have the blue. The blue we hadn't touched yet, and that was one and a half yards. And the yellow, and the yellow we had one and a half yards. So, Mine just so happened to be in two cuts worth. So I'm gonna go ahead and stack these on top of each other and I'm gonna cut two and a half inch strips. So I'm gonna go ahead and line this up from my yellow first. I'm gonna cut two and a half inch strips. So I lined them up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut seven strips, seven two and a half inch strips. And just in case I was off, we have a little tiny bit extra, which I usually do when I make something. All right, and now I'm just gonna stack all these up here and cut the salvages off all at the same time. Just gonna stack them up nicely. Once they are all stacked up, I'm gonna take them over to the machine. I'm gonna pull away that bottom strip, and that means the next two will be right sides together, and the next two will be right sides together. And the next two, and the next two, and the next two, until we have one piece left, which will be the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook all those together by chain piecing them. I am making one long strip. And now I have one super long border strip. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on the floor next to me, and we're going to attach it to the quilt. So I'm gonna do one side and then the other and then i'll add the top and bottom and i will trim it to size as i get to that spot so i'm just going to line it up with the end back stitch and sew this on this side and then trim it off at the end to the size of the quilt and then i'll sew on that side and then the top and bottom
Now we need to press these back towards that color. Now from our one and a half yard, we're gonna cut five inch strips. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten this up and then cut eight strips that are five inches. So I'm gonna cut some five inch strips from here, from my leftover of the yellow. Let's see, I'll probably get two out of this maybe. Nope, just one. I'll have to cut a little bit more. There's one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little bit more of this because I always mess things up. I'm not very good with math, you guys. I am the most horrible with math. And then converting math into yardage, that's not my forte either. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut one more of these, just like that. And what I'm gonna do is something a little different, only because I messed so many things up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the salvage off of this, and I'm straightening my pieces up because I want an equal amount of these two fabrics here. What I'm gonna do, cut these off just like that, and then I'm gonna come over here to this side, and I'm going to cut this side up as well. So I'm going to have a, here, we'll turn it around so I can tell you the number. We're gonna have four pieces that are 21 inches. And then what I'm gonna do is take these, I'm gonna straighten them up and cut the salvage off. And both two of these will go with one of those. So we're gonna go ahead, cut that off. So two strips of the blue is gonna go with one of my 21 inch pieces. As at the machine, we're going to take and hook this to one side and to the other side. And then we're just gonna be centering them on our quilt. I like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all four of these. And you don't have to do these borders. You can do whatever you wish on yours. I'm just doing this for mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and press these, and then I guess you can just watch in fast forward how I attach these, because I gotta lay everything out and try to get it correct. So I'll meet you right back here. And there we have it, my friends. Southwestern Mountains. Isn't it a beauty? I love it. I really love it. I love the aqua and the yellow together with all these fun, colorful prints. And I even took that into the border of this, which is also on, I mean, not the border, the binding, which is also on the back of the quilt. I think it looks absolutely adorable. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and let you see that side too. But before I do, guess what I did with my extra block? Ta-da! I made a throw pillow for my extra block. It is actually a pillow case that you put a 15 by 20 travel pillow size pillow into it. 
But either way, my little leftover block, because my quilt needed four, well, I used 42 pieces. You could use a 40 piece layer cake in this, but I used a 42 piece layer cake and I had one extra block. So my one extra block is a nice, cuddly, comfy pillow. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sorry I didn't show you how to make the pillow in the video, but I'm pretty sure there's other pillow making videos out there on my channel that you can watch. So I'm going to go ahead and pan over this whole quilt so you can see everything, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.